Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting us and uh, I'm happy to be uh, here and contributing as well. Um, so, the theme of uh, environment sustainability uh, and also doing it in a, in a sustainable way, in a scalable way is something very dear to us. We're very happy about uh, being amidst people who care about the environment, who want to do something about it. Uh, and uh, uh, what we are trying to do is try to have an impact through entrepreneurship, innovation and entrepreneurship, science-led innovation and entrepreneurship. So let me tell you a little bit about Venture Center. And uh, uh, since uh, I picked up a few selected uh, companies uh, just to give you a glimpse of uh, uh, some of our activities and uh, uh, this theme uh, as well. So uh, we are an uh, inventive enterprise incubator. Uh, we are a not-for-profit company hosted by CSIR NCL. Uh, and uh, we are the first incubator in the CSIR network. As many of you know, CSIR is uh, the largest uh, uh, network of R&D laboratories for civilian purposes in the country. And it's an approved incubator of NSTEDB, BIRAC, and the Defense Innovation Organization as well. Uh, we, of course, have won several awards, uh, including national awards from several ministries, an Asian award, and most recently, one for nurturing intellectual property uh, in, for 21, 22. And, then, uh, and uh, we've also been ranked as one of the top, uh, the number one bio-incubator in the country as well. Uh, that said, we are sector agnostic. Right? We uh, work across sectors, uh, we work on various different themes and the genesis of this goes back to my own experiences many years back. Uh, uh, I'm an IITB alum as well <laughs> and when I came uh, um, and in the US uh, we floated, uh, uh, in fact I was involved in setting up the Boston chapter of ASHA for education. Uh, which is primarily in basic education. That gave me sort of an understanding of what happens in rural India. And quite honestly, I felt that there was very, you don't achieve much unless you're on the field and doing something on your own. You have to change things uh, through action and not all said and done, uh, being bystanders or just supporting it through uh, little means was not enough. The second lesson was uh, that we need scalable organization. And scalability, uh, to me, uh, uh, you know, the vehicle we have chosen for scalability is entrepreneurship. Um, we have worked with the not-for-profit sector, um, uh, and the the problem that we had was, unfortunately, charity is not scalable, right? And that is one of the things which bothers us, and that's one of the reasons we went down the entrepreneurship road as well. Uh, coming back to India, we realized that technology and converting it to uh, um, enterprises and products uh, is not trivial. There's a large ecosystem needed and it's quite a struggle uh, to make it happen. So building technologies and NCL and so on and so forth, we were often waiting for people to come and license it from us or to work with us. Uh, and very often with their own agendas, right? Uh, the, the agendas we care about may or may not necessarily be on the top of the list. So we decided to look at other models to make that happen. And that's how, that's the gen genesis of some of the innovation activities that we began in NCL. And one of the offshoots of that, one of the delivery vehicles is Venture Center. Uh, we tried a few other models working with large companies. We failed a little bit there uh, to get it off the ground. But uh, the NCL Innovation Park, all of you are welcome to in Pashan Road, uh, hosts today Venture Center, which is India's <coughs> leading inventive enterprises incubator. We had a lot of impact in the years. Last seven, eight years, we've seen um, almost 1,400 crores in revenue, 600 crores in funds raised, companies all over the place, uh, which we will, I'll tell you briefly about. Pune is dear to us, so uh, that is also part, in deep part of our story. And, uh, you know, when uh, Bhal visited us, uh, you know, these two themes of environment in Pune, we connected on uh, those as well. The environment program is also very important to us. Unfortunately, in India right now, the early stage ecosystem, uh, the early stage pipeline creation for technologies and innovation is very poor in India in the private sector space. The government, whatever it's putting in money is going into publicly funded institutions. 
and uh, there is hardly any investment in the private sector to create pipeline. Something like the SBIR phase one in the US is not really there in these sectors. And that basically means that some of the things which you are thinking about today is very valuable if you want to really have an impact in that uh, sector. So that's one of the reasons I'm here today and I'm very happy to support you. Uh, this, is an, uh, this is something where many more people need to get involved and make a difference. And so thank you very much for that. Just a brief couple of things. So since these are three themes which I connected uh, when, uh, when, when I spoke to you first, these are the three things that struck me. Social impact through technology intervention, environment sustainability and climate action, and Pune City. And these are the three themes that um, I read out of our discussion. So let me talk about just a few moments about each of these and what we are doing there. So as far as social impact through technology intervention is concerned, uh, we have a vertical on social uh, innovation and entrepreneurship. And for us, the role model is companies like Amul. As many of you know, uh, Amul is actually a for-profit uh, company. It's not a not-for-profit, right? Uh, and it is scalable. It grows. It creates a lot of social impact, benefits a lot of uh, farmers, a lot of consumers like all of us uh, and it has made a huge impact in the country and of course you know such efforts are very dear to us uh, as well but we do want to focus on technology intervention. There is a lot of social impact that can be done without so technology intervention and that's also important but our focus is primarily on technology interventions. So we look primarily in this uh, space which is this triangle uh, where uh, we try to see where we can work, where uh, you know, if you were to look at social impact and technology intensity, our sweetest spot is where there is both technology intensity and uh, uh, large-scale impact. Um, so, for example, during COVID, uh, you must have seen uh, uh, MyLab, which is a diagnostics company, produce some of these diagnostics. They are a company associated with us. Um, you might have also heard about uh, Serum Institute's first vaccine hitting US, which is called Novavax. Uh, that data generation has happened in our facility uh, in the Venture Center uh, as well. And that is possible in India. And there are many more such activities that we can contribute to in large ways. And technology, all said and done, while <coughs> ground level activities are important, all said and done, the things that create the largest impact even in rural areas is technology, right? At the end of the day, mobile phone matters a lot to all our uh, rural community. So let's not let's not believe we don't have to be sort of uh, um, you know play down technology. It's important to uh, keep technology uh, high up in the agenda. But there are also some domains which are niche, where you cannot have very large social impact but focused important impact. And those are also important to us. For example, drugs for neglected diseases or a bionic arm, for example, for amputees, and so on. And this is something which is also important, and we need to find ways to finance it, to resource it, to make it happen. And in this situation is where, you know, I think charities play a large role, and they should be focusing on some of these themes as well. The last side of it is where the impact is very large, uh, but the technology intensity is not so high. Um, you know, solar power driven employment, livelihood in rural areas, and so on and so forth. I think it's important as well. Uh, we have a very large activity in, in uh, uh, bio CNG from organic waste from Pune City, from by one of our startups. And uh, that is not as technology intensive as you would think in other domains, but extremely important uh, and extremely pioneering efforts, I think, in my opinion. So when we look at social entrepreneurship, we look at so solutions that work in rural India, solutions for rural income, pioneering tech demonstrations for pressing problems of society and technology options for society, right? Uh, options for the future where we don't know what's going to hit us tomorrow and it's important that we be uh, ready when it is uh, needed as well. Uh, the second part is environmental sustainability and climate action and that's where uh, there are many themes we are looking at, clean energy, energy storage, sustainable mobility, carbon management, sustainable ingredients, uh, resource utilization efficiencies, circular economy, waste reduction, management, waste to value and pollution control. So some of these themes uh, we are looking at uh, from, and our model is to look and nurture uh, people who have ideas and also build enterprises around them and of course let them flourish over a period of time. 
Uh, and it's very important that uh, they become a sustainable, a scalable organization over a period of time that raises its own resources. So our activity is in the earliest stages where we are sort of nurturing them with some early stage interventions. This is an example. This is from the LACME fashion show this year. Uh, I'm just picking a few. Sorry, I, I can't give you a full glimpse of it. But these are a few. This is from the LACME fashion show uh, from this year. And these clothes that you see are colored by microbial colors. Right? Uh, these are entirely microbial. Uh, and this is one of our startups called KB Calls, founded by scientists, entrepreneurs uh, who uh, have done their PhD from uh, um, University of Bombay, UDCT. Right? Here's another company which is trying to look at sustainable alternatives for packaging from seaweed polymers. You might be aware that seaweed is one of the largest absorbers of carbon dioxide. Right? And uh, the idea of this company is to close that loop, uh, to consume on one side and to produce something that is compostable at the other side. And uh, uh, one of the leading uh, FMCG companies Global FMCG companies is today looking at how to produce packaging solutions with some of these uh, products. This is another company which is called Crast, which is looking at how, what to do, uh, how to create value out of agro waste and stubble. Uh, burning of stubble is a very large problem. And if you want to create value, you need to create, you need to create mechanisms by which the farmers are incentivized to remove that stubble. right? And that's not going to happen if you're just going to make fuel out of it. Okay, but that's not enough earnings for them, right? So the idea is to build products which create enough value addition that you can pay farmers to aggregate some of these stubble waste and therefore make it viable and interesting for farmers to participate in this process. And this is a company which has come out with particle boards uh, and also with uh, packaging solutions, including some which are uh, and of course, these are very uh, used for, uh, for example, the packaging waste, which is used uh, for packaging, which is used for some of the six-pack beer, ba beer packs uh, for Corona beer, uh, is being made by this company today from barley waste. Okay, and uh, of course, uh, there are also packaging from other solutions uh, for uh, boards and so on, which are formaldehyde-free. This is uh, one of our other companies here in Pune. Many of you may not be aware that a lot of your organic waste that gets collected from your home is getting collected and processed with an arrangement with PMC by a company called Nobel Exchange, which has a plant in Telegon, right? And this is a plant, which is a 350 tons per day bio-CNG plant, which is converting it organic waste to bio-CNG and bio-CNG to IOCL, which is supplying it through its petrol uh, through its CNG pumps uh, to Pune's municipal buses, right? Uh, that is a, a pioneering effort in the country because this is the role model for the government Satat program, okay, which is now being rolled out in different countries and has been, uh, and of course, it's a very difficult business since it's working with the municipal corporations as well. Um, a few others in sustainable ingredients, proteins, uh, you know, um, the animal industry is responsible for a lot of climate action related issues as well. Uh, and we are looking at alternative proteins as well. Um, agrobiologicals, there's a lot of, uh, lot of uh, CO2 impact as well as environmental impact from, bio, from, from, from a conventional chemical pesticides and so on. Here is a company which is the leading, leading company in agrobiologics in India today, operating in many states uh, in the country today. And this is something which uh, is also three uh, PhDs from Pune. Uh, from Pune University uh, as well. The last thing I want to leave you with is Pune City, which I think is very important for Bhal as well. In 2007, we said we want to be the organization which will be credited with creating, shaping, and sustaining a Pune cluster of innovative technology businesses with significant economic impact regionally, nationally, and globally within the next 20 years. Right? Uh, it's about 16 years. We are making progress in that direction. This is where all our companies are located in Pune City today, right? Uh, there is a high density around Baner Road, of course, but there are also those in many industry parks uh, in the city as well, including uh, Bosri, uh, Narhe, Parvati, and so on and so forth. So 
We are proud to see all these companies make a dent, and hopefully they will make a dent uh, in, in a, and have global impact. Uh, we are very keen to build a lot more companies in the environmental sustainability space, and that's one of our key goals. And anybody who champions that space is a friend for us. So we're happy to be uh, in this gathering today. Thank you.